Hello everyone, my name is Ahmed Nabi. My advisor is Dr. Chani and Dr. Fredley. And my topic today is on the utilization of EMI BCB shielding to implement the integrated resonant inductor for the 3 kilowatt 400 volt to 48 volt LHC converter. Our application is targeting the IT sector and specifically targeting the power architecture of the data centers. When we look at the internet traffic, we see it's, it's increasing exponentially year by year. This reflects on the energy consumption of the data center and the IT industry overall. According to this report from Nature, the IT electricity demand is expected to increase up to 20% or more of the total electricity demand, global electricity demand by 2030. And when you look at the data center, the data center only is consuming 50% of the total ID industry electricity. Our target is the data center application and the network application. And both of them contribute to more than 80% of the total IT energy consumption. So saving fraction of this power is very important for the efficiency of the IT industry. So looking at the data center power architecture and the telecom power architecture, recently they have been using the same bus architecture, which is the 48 volt bus. In here, we have the power supply unit, which has an input of EC and then rectifies the output to 48 volt. And then the 48 volt bus is supplying the line cards or the motherboards in case of the, in case of the data center. So this 48 volt bus architecture represents an ecosystem for the telecom and data center and it's widely used. There have been some developments in the 48 volt bus architecture. So in 2016, the Open Compute project released the Open React version 2 standard, ORV2. In here, the output voltage has a wide range from 40 volt to 60 volt to control the charging profile of the battery bank unit, which is directly connected to the bus. The nominal output voltage is 54 volt and the peak efficiency required from the power supply is more than 97%. However, there are some limitations, like the output, the, out, the wide out voltage range makes the design of the DC-DC stage harder and it's usually over-designed for higher voltage and higher current. This makes the efficiency of the DC-DC stage lower and also the efficiency of the bus converter, the 48 volt to 12 volt or 48 volt to 1 volt converter lower. So recently in 2020, the Open Compute project released a new standard, Open Rec version 3. In here, they fix the output voltage approximately around 50 volt, and the battery bank unit is charged independently using an independent battery charger. The, output, the nominal output voltage in here is 50 volt, and therefore there is no wide output range anymore. And this makes the efficiency of the DCD stage higher and also the efficiency of the 48 volt to, to 12 volt or 1 volt converters higher. Therefore, the peak efficiency of the power supply unit is expected to increase more than 97.5%. With, uh, with a narrow range output voltage, we expect to have easier design for the DC DC stage, and we also expect to have higher DC DC efficiency. In CBUS, we have been working on the DC-DC converter design of the 3 kilowatt power supply to help increase the efficiency and the power density and reduce assembly cost at the same time. We have went through multiple generations. The first three generations are running at high frequency of 1 megahertz. In here, we can achieve very high power density. However, the big efficiency was limited up to 98% for the DC-DC converter. And then in generation four, we optimized the frequency to find the best frequency that can achieve the best efficiency to be competitive to the state of our solution. In generation four, we run the DC-DC converter at 300 kilohertz and achieve efficiency close to 99% and power density four times higher than the state of our solution. 
with the PCB magnetics, we can get the same state of art efficiency. We have less labor intensive design. Thanks to all the passive and active component are integrated on the same PCB. We can integrate EMI solution by adding EMI shielding layers to the six layer PCB board we are using. And we can get better thermal management thanks to the PCB based magnetics, which has naturally high surface to body ratio. In this work, we are proposing a new approach to implement the three kilowatt DC-DC converter by implementing a transformer with a built-in leakage inductor. The structure of the transformer is shown on the left-hand side. We are using two transformers, T1 and T2, and we are using two output sets or two full bridge rectifiers. The secondary winding is connected in series between the two transformers. We have one secondary turn on each transformer. And by unbalancing the two transformers and integrating them on the same core, we can create leakage flux within controllable leakage flux within the transformer. By making transformer T1 has N1 turns, uh, turns number and transformer T2 has N2 turn, turns number, this unbalance between the two transformers creates leakage flux between the primary winding and secondary winding. And this leakage flux is confined within the auxiliary leg we have on the side, on the left side and the right side here. The benefit of this approach is that we can get smaller footprint than conventional approach where we have an independent or standalone resonant inductor and we can get higher density integration. So this shows the top view, which shows only two transformers, and these two transformers has built in leakage inductance in them. This happened because of the unbalance between transformer one and transformer two. So as we discussed, the leakage flux in this uh, transformer is confined within the auxiliary leg, which are the added legs that don't have any winding around them. When we look at the finite energy simulation at the leakage flux at full load, we find we show here the leakage flux distribution in the core, and we find that the leakage flux circulates between one of the transformers and the auxiliary leg closer to this transformer. But we find also there is high flux leakage flux concentration at the blade and at the side. There is no flux going from one transformer to other transformer, and this makes the burden on the auxiliary leg too high and get high cores. In order to improve this core architecture, we propose to use a five-leg approach. And here we have still two transformer legs, and then we have three auxiliary legs, two, two on the left and right side, and one extra leg in the center. This one extra leg added in the center makes the flux, the leakage flux distribution much more uniform and we can get less core loss. The core loss is used from six, uh, from 10.8 watt to 6.9 watt. As we discussed earlier, the leakage flux can be generated in the transformer by the means of unbalance between the two transformers. So an original transformer looks like this in the top right picture. We have we can have two transformers T1 and T2, and they have exactly the same turn as ratio 4 to 1 and 4 to 1. In this kind of transformer, it's a pure transformer with no leakage inductance at all. This transformer can have very low EC resistance of the winding because of perfect interleaving between the primary and secondary. However, in order to create the leakage, we have to introduce unbalance. That, make, that means that we should disturb the number of turns on the, of the primary winding in both transformers. So in the transformer plus leakage, we see here that we have five turns primary on transformer T1, and we have only three turns primary on transformer T2. However, unbalancing the winding, even though it creates leakage, but it will increase the AC loss of the, of the winding. And that's because 
both the DC resistance and the proximity effect will increase due to the non perfect interleaving. When we look at the current density distribution between the two transformers, we see integrating the leakage within the transformer creates high EC loss in the winding. We can see here we have higher current density in the primary winding. When we compare the magnetizing resonant and winding loss between the two cases, we see in the original transformer, we have very low resonant inductance or leakage inductance thanks to the perfect interleaving of the original transfer. However, with the integrated transformer plus leakage, we see that we can increase the leakage inductance and also control it to 2.6 microhenry. So the unbalance creates more leakage inductance, which can be used as a serious resonant inductor. However, the catch is with the transformer loss leakage due to the disturbance of the interleaving between primary and secondary, we increase the winding loss a lot from 13 watt to 17, to, uh, to 17 watt. This represents 30% increase in winding loss. As a price, we have to pay to integrate the leakage within the transformer. So in this work, we propose a better BCB utilization to help reduce the winding loss in the integrated transformer and inductor. So looking at the integrated transformer and inductor, so this shows the circuit diagram of the transformer. We have two transformers connected in series from the primary and secondary side. The first transformer is five to one turnus ratio and the second transformer is three to one turnus ratio. As we discussed, this creates high current, current density in the winding and increase the winding loss. In the second approach, we are looking into better utilization of the BCB by basically utilizing the shield layers that blocks the common mode noise between the primary and secondary. In this, in this approach, we connect the shield winding to the terminal of the primary winding. This makes us use the shield winding as part of the primary and it will have two functions. It will act as common mode noise shield between the primary and secondary and also act as extra primary terms. By utilizing the shield winding in both transforms, we can have 100% BCB utilization unlike the previous case where we only utilize four out of the six layer BCB. When we compare the current density between the two cases, the new approach reduces the current density in the winding a lot. And the winding loss reduced from 17 watt to 14.5 watt. So the proposed approach, we can create the same inductance. We will have easier primary layout because when you utilize the shield winding, this reduces the burden on the primary turns and we can have less number of primary turns. We will have greater BCB utilization. Here we use all the six layers as part of the winding, unlike the previous case where we will only use four layers out of the six layer BCB. However, one price we have to pay in this approach is that we change the effectiveness of the shield because we change the voltage on the shield layers. The question is by how much, and this will be a trade-off between the EMI performance and the winding loss. So here we show simulation of the common mode noise for the proposed winding compared to the first approach where we have two unbalanced transformers and a perfect shielding and the original transformer without shielding. So on the bottom picture, we show the common mode noise simulated results. We see that adding the shielding in approach one reduces the common mode noise by 20 dB. And then in approach two, in the proposed approach with full BCB utilization, we change the voltage. We add some offset on the voltage layers, which will create some common mode noise and this Offset will, will create will increase the common mode noise by 3 dB. So 
in the proposed approach, we have a small increase in the voltage between the, vol the shield layers and the secondary layers, and this only accounts for 3 dB increase in the common mode. We believe this is a good trade off between the winding loss and the common mode noise. Here we show the hardware prototype of the converter. We have can achieve a power density of 1000 watt per cubic inch, and the converter can achieve a peak efficiency of 98.7%. Lastly, we can fit this converter within the recommended open rack power supply specs. The open rack power supply is shown on the left side. It has 520 millimeter length by 73 millimeter width, and it comes in one new form factor, which has a profile of 44 millimeter. The designed module has a power density of one kilowatt per cubic inch. When we fit it inside the power supply form factor, it can only consume 11% of the total volume. And it comes with also really low profile, which leaves a lot of space for the cooling to be effective. In this case, the total power supply power density is actually fixed by the open rack specs and comes at 3 watt, 30 watt per cubic inch. In order to increase the power density of the open rack power supply, we can fit up to three modules of the design 3 kilowatt DC DC converter in the power supply form factor, and it will only consume 33% of the total volume. 67% of the remaining volume of the power supply can be used as 9 kilowatt BFC plus EMI. By using the BCB magnetics, using this robust design, we can enable up to 9 kilowatt per power supply, which will increase the power density and increase the throughput of the power consumed by the server rack. Thank you. This has been my presentation and I'm welcome to any question. Please contact me on nabi at vt.edu for any questions or additions. Thank you.